So good morning, everybody. My name is Stephanie Lucas. I am the founder and CEO of the Annuity Consultants. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today for our heart-centered planning series. Um, Speaking your truth is the topic we're going to be discussing. Um, a little background on the heart-centered planning series. This series was really created to assist agents and advisors um, work, to work with their clients on a soul level and to really bring a way of planning that is authentic and um, to give them unbiased recommendations and really help them to do planning in a way that is um, based on the desires of their clients. So we are super excited to talk about this topic. It's one that's very difficult for a lot of people. So speaking your truth is an important part of not only business, but life. Um, so before we get started, a couple of housekeeping tips. We are gonna do Q&A throughout the series or throughout the session. So in the uh, chat box, if you would type any questions that you have, we will um, go through those questions and answer them as we're going through the presentation. It's gonna be more of an interview type um, process. And so anything is welcome. We would love to answer your questions and assist in, in anything that we can during this uh, about 45 minutes. It'll run anywhere from 45 to an hour, depending on how many questions we have. And if you wanna send it privately, you can. So just select private when you um, pop it in the chat there. Otherwise we will call out who asked the question. Um, and then if there's not enough time, at the end, we will provide these questions and answers in the email that we send out. So this webinar is being recorded and you'll get a recording along with the guide that coincides with this particular topic. So if you're not familiar, we have a eight piece series of guides that go along with these topics that we're, we're discussing. So you'll get that along with the recording and we would love for you to share that with your friends and colleagues as well. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our speaker here today. We have Carol Campos, which we are super thrilled to have. Um, she is the co-founder of the Divine Bed Breadcrumb, a global online community and podcast which showcases amazing people shining their light around the world. She is also a certified coach focusing on empowerment, transition, and purpose. She helps her clients clear old patterns and beliefs, connect to their heart intelligence, cultivate self-love, and discover their purpose. Welcome, Carol. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, we're super excited to have you. Thank you. So. Um, Today, like I said, we're gonna be talking about speaking your truth and what does that really mean? So every topic, we define it based on what our thoughts are because there are lots of definitions out there. So for this one, speaking your truth means authentically expressing what you know is true for you, not only in business, but also in life. It means you're coming from a place of true authenticity when you express yourself and communicate with others. Speaking your truth means being honest even when you are faced with a difficult or challenging situation. And it also means you are able to hold space to receive others, other people's truths when they're expressed to you. So that, that's a fun one to work on. <laughs> so, all right, so we're gonna jump into these questions. Like I said, we're gonna do Q and A, so it's more of like an interview type um, scenario here. Uh, so my first question for you, Carol, is, um, if you could share a brief history of your life in corporate America before you really changed your way of, of doing things, of doing business, and really beginning to live more of a heart-centered way and speaking your truth. Sure. So I spent over 20 years in corporate, and I started right at the bottom in a customer service role at a small family-owned company and gradually worked my way up um, to managing two teams at a Fortune 10 company where we had to oversee over $100 million in spend. So super stressful. So, and during that time, I struggled for a long time to find my voice and to step into my power. And advocating for myself did not come naturally. Um, I would say like a lot of people, I had kind of good girl syndrome and didn't wanna say anything wrong or rock the boat or say no to requests. Um, but what I was really good at was facilitating, facilitating connection. And the clients and internal teams seemed to like and trust me. I didn't sweep things under the rug. 
I had integrity and a strong work ethic and they knew I could get the job done. And because of this, over time, I became known as kind of a, a fixer, my, that's my own term, um, kind of smoothing over accounts that were in jeopardy and working with internal business partners to streamline processes or get projects back on track. And it was in the advocating for others that I learned to better advocate for myself and bring my voice to the table. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's definitely a difficult thing to do. I think we've all experienced that, um, you know, and a lot of it is because of programs, right? Growing up, you're taught not to speak up, right? You're taught to be quiet. So exactly. Yeah, that's a, it's a difficult thing to balance for sure. Um, so how did you bridge the gap between the corporate structure and um, speaking your truth? and you know, really being more heart-centered in that way? You know, I don't think I consciously bridged a gap, but what happened is that as I became empowered and uncovered my own voice, um, I felt confident to communicate and do business in a way that felt completely soul aligned. And I think that's what the clients and internal business partners responded to. You know, I kind of put myself in their shoes. I was completely authentic. And, and when me or, or one of my team made a mistake, I was on the phone explaining what happened, what are we doing to address it? And I just treated them the way I wanted to be treated in the same situation, which ultimately built trust. And I think living in a truthful and heart-centered way is not necessarily about being warm and fuzzy. It's being strong and having courage, yet not stepping on anyone's toes to get results. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's not about hurting people to get what you want. It's about finding a way to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then how about, can you share a challenging moment when you didn't speak your truth and maybe what you learned from the situation? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Um, you know, there were many challenges along the way. I, you know, it's hard to think of one example. I think because I had what I refer to as good girl syndrome, where I, I was afraid to rock the boat, when I finally got to that point where I was speaking my truth and I was drawing strong boundaries, at first people didn't know what to make of that. And that was a big fear for me. And I think for a lot of people, it's like, oh, what are people, they're not gonna like me or they're gonna think, I'm a, I'm a pain in the butt or wh whatever the, the thought is. Yeah. So I think it was making this shift inside myself to draw healthy boundaries and then be okay with whatever the fallout was. But what I found was these fears I had about people being angry or whatever, they, not so much that they were unfounded because I think at first people were annoyed because they were used to me saying yes to everything and all that. Um, but ultimately they had more respect for me and it, that's when my career really took off and went in a different direction. That's when I went into managerial roles and was able to affect the change that I wanted to. That's amazing. Um, I definitely see that, you know, when you are, um, holding yourself to a different standard and you know, your worth people are going to respond in a way that, you know, you ex hopefully expect because it's, it's you have self-respect, so they're going to respect you. So it's a reflection of what's going on in your inner world, right? Ab so. Absolutely. And I think there's a big difference between being considered nice and being genuine. You know, one is very empowering, whereas, you know, being nice kind of conjures up having wishy-washy boundaries, having kind of being a doormat yes yeah i i agree definitely mm -hmm. well, we are definitely on the same page here yeah. so. <laughs> it it took me a long time to get to that point though you know it, it does and you brought it up stephanie i think you know we we're raised this way you know th this is the way we're conditioned and i yeah. think especially women I, I i mean it happens with men as well but i think as women especially yeah. the the good girl syndrome runs rampant and it's it's like working a muscle it takes time not to have the being nice as your default setting right yeah i agree and i think too in this industry in particular um you know it's a very male dominated industry 
And so women come into it and are treated differently than the men are. And it's unfortunate that in today's day and age, that is still happening, but it's true. And, yeah. um, you know, I think that people come in with that being nice, you know, and it turns into something so different. And um, women have to become more of their masculine and try to operate in a way that the men do. And mm -hmm. I don't think that that's necessary, right? No, absolutely. It, yeah, I think that there, you, if you want to, you can find a really good balance to being strong, but still being feminine and being able to be, uh, you know, productive and take care of your clients. So completely agree. Yeah. Um, all right. So what are some of the negative effects of holding back your truth or not communicating openly with others? Oh boy, that's a great question. I think when, when you're not allowed or feel, I think it's more, it's, it's a, you have this perception that you're not allowed to speak your truth. That's something that can eat away at you. That's something that can build resent, resentment in general. I think we've all been in a situation where we've been in a meeting and there was something on the tip of our tongue. And then at the last minute, we decided not to say something. And then maybe somebody else said it instead. And it was your idea. You could, you could have been the hero in this situation, but you chose not to speak up. Yeah. So it can really, I think, affect our self-worth and self-esteem if we're not speaking our truth. And also, we don't, we don't want to ever feel like we're betraying ourselves. Um, and I think that's what happens a lot when we don't say what we want to say. And it doesn't have to be in a blunt, rude way. It can be in a respectful way. I think this comes up a lot as you're trying to move up in your, your company, whether you're trying to advocate for yourself um, in a new role or get a raise. Um, there's something that's very, it's, it's just deflating. If, if you've had an opportunity to maybe speak your piece and then you don't take that opportunity, it just kind of eats away at you. Yeah, yeah. And, and speaking of eating away at you, I mean, I have seen multiple times where health issues can occur. You know, there, mm -hmm. there are things energetically, if it gets stuck, it can cause problems within your being, you know? And oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, these kinds of things, they manifest quite a bit in back pain and in stomach issues. Yeah. Um, I've seen that quite a bit. Um, and, and there is, there's a direct correlation between that. Um, and, and even in your body, it feels so different in, in your body to say what you want to say versus either not saying anything or saying something that you it's just to appease everyone right. and it doesn't feel aligned to your values yeah. yeah yeah and unfortunately i don't think a lot of people are aware of that feeling either so yeah. I think awareness is a big part of you know dealing with this as well um there there's a lot of interconnectedness in things right and um i think the awareness piece is really important uh to know that hey if my body doesn't feel good, especially in your stomach, mm -hmm. I, if I'm not telling, you know, saying something, it's not that I'm being dishonest. It's, it's really like not saying the whole part of what I want. Right. Exactly. And, yeah, and I, I definitely know how it is. And eventually yeah. I get out, but sometimes things are difficult and it takes time. Um, yeah. You know, other times it's easy and it gets easier as you practice it too. It, it is definitely a practice. I think a really good tip for people if they're trying to figure out is something right for me or not, yeah. if it feels light in your body, then it's usually a good thing for you. It's aligned. If it feels, if you just feel heavy, if it kind of drains you of energy, that's usually a good sign that it's not the right direction. And again, that's a practice. Um, some people can feel that right away or might know, oh, I know exactly what you mean. But just think back to different decisions you've made over the course of your life and how, how you were feeling when you made the, those decisions and how they turned out. Yeah, yeah, I, I know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't always been able to be this way, right? It, it definitely took time and practice. Mm -hmm. for me. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. It took me decades. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, what, what practical advice do you have for people struggling to communicate their truth or speak up in challenging business or personal situations? Again, I think it really is a practice. I think you want to look at, first of all, why aren't you feeling comfortable to speak your truth? You know, we hear a lot about imposter syndrome. Well, who am I to say this? Or who's going to listen to me? Right. Um, you know, not feeling like you have the expertise. Or in some cases, you don't feel like you have the value or, or, or self-worth. Um, so obviously as a coach, that's something I work with people uh, on because some of us have blind spots around that. We see certain patterns showing up in our life, you know, hey, why is so-and-so always getting the promotions when I'm, I feel like I'm doing double the work? And a lot of times it's the energy you're putting out there. It's the way you're communicating and people are responding to that. And it's not about a blaming the victim. It's just because becoming aware of what you're putting out there and how you're showing up. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's interesting because this series and actually being on video is something for me that I've had a struggle with because I was just like, you know, nobody cares what I have to say. Nobody wants to hear about this. And it was really hard for me to overcome that, these, these fears and really start speaking my truth and talking about these different topics. Because I knew I was practicing them and they were making my life and my business better, but I didn't know if anybody else wanted to talk about it or hear about it, you know? Exactly. And, and that's so common. And yet I feel like each of us, you know, I think everybody loves to hear about a hero's journey and, and everybody loves kind of the overcoming story. So sharing our stories and how we got from A to B if that can help one person, that's an amazing thing. Don't don't worry about, okay, am I gonna have this, you know, X amount of followers or you know, that kind of thing. Because I, I gotta be honest, people are not thinking about you as as much as you think they are. I remember that myself when I left corporate and I started doing what I'm doing now. I just was in this panic mode that past coworkers were going to be like laughing behind my back and you know who does she think she is and and that was very real I remember feeling very vulnerable but it passed pretty quickly and part of it was because once you are showing up in an authentic way the more you do it the better that feels and you know i feel aligned this is my north star i know what i'm supposed to be doing and then secondly like i just said you realize people just aren't paying attention to you as much as you think they are yeah. so just keep doing what you're doing and stay in your lane and don't don't worry about quote unquote competition or naysayers I and again it's a practice it is a practice yes and it's hard not to do that because as humans, again, we're conditioned to like think that everybody is thinking about us, right? Oh yeah. It's like my ego and- It, it is, it is. You know. And it's a human thing. It, it, it doesn't mean that we're, you know, we're all running around as narcissists. It, it's not that, but <laughs> you know, it's funny because just as an example, I, I post a lot on LinkedIn and there are times when I've posted things that are very similar and I think, oh, people are gonna get bored of this. And then what's interesting is people who engage they engage as if I've never said it before. And it's because they don't remember what I did six yes. months. You know, they have a million other things they're doing. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I did learn in marketing, right? You talk about five things all the time. You know, you don't talk about more than that. People want to know that you are specializing in certain things. So your topics are the same. You just kind of word it differently, right? Right. And, and and you know, Stephanie, I'm I'm big on energy. I feel like the people who like what you're putting out there, they're going to be attracted to it. The others will fall away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's a big part of what we've been talking about in this whole series is, you know, finding the kind of clients that these agents and advisors want to be working with, that they don't mm -hmm. have to work with everybody. And there's enough business out there for everybody. And you're right for the right people, you know? It, exactly. I think that's such an important point. I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that there is no pie. There are almost 8 billion people on the planet. There is plenty of people out there and there's there's a whole 
section of people who they're going to be gravitating towards you. And, and, and I think that's another thing I struggled with in the beginning too. It's just like, oh my gosh, there's such a glut of coaches in the market. How do I stand out? How do I, you know, and I was so consumed with that. And, and, you know, I only got this many likes on this post and, oh my gosh, I don't know. And this person over here is, you know, I was, it was all in to comparing. Yeah. And I think we, we have to realize is, you know, we're comparing our real lives to their highlight reel. And it's not real. Like just yeah. <laughs> stay in your lane and just keep yeah. showing up and being who you are and being genuine. Yes. Yes. That is good advice. Um, so what about your daily practice? What does that look like? And for example, what structures do you have in place that keep you kind of centered and focused and keep you really speaking your truth? Oh, I love this question. So I'm a big believer in morning routines. I wasn't always, I really resisted it. But if you talk to any of the you know big names out there, the Tony Robbins and Oprah's of the world, they all have morning routines. Yes. And although it sounds counterintuitive, getting up a little earlier and having a routine actually gives you more energy and makes you more productive. So what I like to do is I'll do a brief meditation in the morning and I do what's called automatic writing, which is kind of like a third person journaling exercise where you're really connecting to your higher wisdom. And, and you're kind of still in that sleepy theta brainwave state. Um, and you get amazing downloads as you practice this. And so I get a lot of information from that. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, big, big things about my life, but other times it's, it's very, you know, chop wood, carry water type of things. Like you need to get such and such done. <laughs> um, I, I also like to do written visualization. So I, I'm, you know, a lot, some people just do this in their imagination. I, I like to write it down where I write about how I want my life to look, but I write it as if it's already happened. And it's so energizing. Um, and it sounds silly to some people, but if you really start doing it, like, I don't know if anyone has ever, oh, what would it be like if I won the lottery and your mind starts going there and oh my gosh, I'd be able to do this for my family, my friends, and how fun would this be? And you start to get really buzzy. It's kind yeah. of the same thing. And it's just a really good way to start off the morning. And then for me, I really try to get outside. I feel very grounded, very connected when I'm in nature. I also get a lot of download of ideas when I'm in nature. Um, so it strengthens me. I feel like my whole immune system, my energy, everything is strengthened through that morning routine. Yeah, that's great. Well, before we got started, we were talking about how I actually just built a yoga and meditation space out in my backyard. So in the mornings, I go out and do that now. And it and I've always done this, right? I had a space in my house that I could do that, but now it's out there. And so I do have to walk through the yard and it's beautiful and it's got lots of trees and grass. And it's it's a nice way to kind of separate myself from being here inside the house and in the office and go and get grounded before I get my day started. So yeah. really creating the space for it too. Um, that's tranquil where you yeah. can. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's such a good point. Creating a space. It's almost like creating ceremony in your day. This is your sacred time. And I think, especially now life is just so busy. Um, and we have so many distractions giving yourself the gift, even if it's a half hour, even if yeah. that means getting up a little earlier, it is so worth it. It really is. Yeah, I love that. So, um, okay. And then what about, uh, let's see, what is your vision and hope for fellow business owners and people in the insurance and financial industry? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I feel, again, that there is no pie. So just remembering that there are going to be people who gravitate towards you and people who won't and being okay with that and trusting that yeah. your people are out there. Um, I, I think comparing ourselves to others just, oh my gosh, it's the quickest way to kill your confidence, your creativity. Um, and, and there's something to be said for staying in your own lane. And 
again, I said it before, you know, we tend to compare our everyday life and just kind of the trajectory of our career to everyone else's highlight reels. And when you see their social media posts, yes, they're going to show you the best of the best, just like you do on your own post, but you don't see all the struggles they went through as well. So really just kind of focusing on your own business, on the ideal clients that are there for you. I have no doubt there are people just waiting for you to show up and speak your truth and connect with them. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree with that. So we've actually had a couple of questions come in here. Um, the first one is from Jen. She said, how are some, some ways you can draw your, oh, draw your boundaries? How are some, what are some ways that you can draw boundaries? So thanks for the question, Jen. So I think really it comes down to first having awareness about yourself. And again, if whether this means a coach or a mentor or even talking to some trusted family members or friends, wow. you know, how do you see me? What, what, how, how do you see me reacting? Ask some of the questions you know, how do you think my boundaries are? You'll get a lot of information from people. Again, do, do this exercise with people that you trust and you know love you and have your best interests at heart because a lot of times we're not aware because it, we really are on autopilot. We've been doing the way we've been doing things for so long. Yeah. And once you get a little bit of a sense of kind of how you're showing up or in which cases maybe your boundaries are wishy-washy, then you can start addressing that. This is a good time to, to journal, you know, what could I do differently? How could I show up differently the next time I have this situation show up? Um, you know, speaking your truth when you've never really done it, it I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be scary the first time. It really will because you're going to be afraid of how are people around me going to react they're so used to me saying yes yeah. so for example let's just say you're at work um and you've been asked to do a certain task that normally even if you you're inside you're screaming no i don't want to do this she's like oh, of course i'll do that for you so this yeah. time you just want to come up with something that feels comfortable would say hey you know i'm sorry i i, I have all this other stuff on my plate i'm not going to be able to help you with that today you might even want to almost script it out so that you can say it over and over and get comfortable um and and again it's going to feel unnatural and weird and hard and scary in the beginning but i guarantee you the more that you do this the easier it gets and you are literally rewiring the connections in your brain to change that default setting to one of being empowered and just be prepared that you might take people off guard um they're because they're not used to it and remember that you're not going to die because you said no and somebody's maybe a little pissed off you're, you're going to be okay and yeah. just remember that but it is it's a practice it's going to be a muscle you work until it becomes rote yeah yeah no i totally agree and i mean you, so basically we don't want to be yes men or women right yeah, <laughs> like, exactly so that's really um, well and you can, you can tell the difference because sometimes i'm not saying say no to everything but again you'll kind of feel in your body you'll, your intuition when you feel good about helping someone that feels very different from i don't really want to do this i have so much work to do that's a very different energy you know and, and obviously there's always going to be tasks that we have to do some things that have to get done so yeah. i mean obviously use your judgment but when it's something where it's you really don't want to do something this that's a good opportunity to start practicing yeah totally agree with that um we got another question in from allison um what do you mean by staying in your own lane Okay, great question. Yeah, sometimes I, these buzz terms that I think everybody's familiar with. So I think especially with social media, we have such a tendency to compare ourselves to others yeah. and watch their trajectory and watch their following and how many people like them. And it's really draining and it's, uh, 
oh, comparison, again, it just, it kills your confidence. So when I say stay in your own lane, it's not stick your head in the sand and don't be aware of what's going on with quote unquote competitors, but it's not putting all your energy towards that. It's focusing, it's, that's nice that they're doing that. Oh, that's cool, but I'm doing this and this is what I'm working on. Yeah. So not necessarily having blinders on because you know if you think of yourself in a car in your lane, you're aware, but you're going your your destination is there and that's what i'm focusing on yeah yeah i totally understand that and also you know whatever your competitors are doing like wish them well exactly yeah I, i'm a big believer in collaboration over competition i think competition over you know however many decades that's been the way of the world and i think you know little by little things are changing. I feel like with the millennials and the generation behind them, things are changing. And I think that's going to be good for all of us. They are. I agree. Um, one thing I do want to share, actually, I've got a gentleman that I work with that is a mass mutual rep. And we've been working together for about 12 years. And probably five years ago, I suggested to him meditation. And he started incorporating that into his practice. And he has change the way that he lives. He's changed his business. He does more business. He does these meditations right before his meetings. And he is able to be more present and really, you know, work with his clients in a different way. And the reason I'm sharing this is he sent me an email the other day that Mass Mutual was putting on a webinar around meditation. They brought a doctor in talking about it. And so it's like, you know, if we can change the industry from the inside out and bring these different practices into the corporate setting, everybody's going to be doing better and we'll be continuing to co-create things, right? Um, Absolutely. You know, and, and I think that's a great example of how things are shifting. I think a lot of that used to seem like this woo-woo, airy-fairy stuff, but now it's, you know, there's so much evidence. There's it. There's so much science-based peer-reviewed evidence that all of this works and helps. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the HeartMath Institute. They're out in California, but since the 80s, they've been doing studies on the power of the heart and you know how it's related to stress, how, how the energy of the heart is related to the body. And they found so many fascinating things. So first of all, they found within the heart 40,000 cells that look like brain cells. So they call it the little brain. And what they also found, because I think a lot of us were taught the brain sends signals to other parts of the body and, and it's the brain sending all the signals. Well, yeah. what they found is that the heart sends actually more signals to the brain. And when you get the heart and brain working together, it's called a state of heart coherence. And when you're in this state, you can think outside the box, you sleep better, you're more rested, you're more creative. There, there's just this myriad of benefits. And they originally started this whole technique to help Navy SEALs and first responders and people in very high stress situations that when they were out of the situation, it used to take them hours to kind of calm down. And by doing this technique, within minutes, they were back to baseline in a state of coherence. And so there's just, there's, it's not a woo-woo thing that you're you're getting wisdom from your heart. Um, it, it's a real thing. So that that meditation, um, it's all been in the workplace. Oh, what I was going to say about that is heart math is actually they're doing um, webinars and things like that within the corporate environment to show people how to do this. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'm definitely going to have to look up what they're doing and yeah. We should share that in our email to everybody. Um, okay, we had a couple of private questions come in. Um, let's see, can someone be too truthful? How do you balance honesty with respect and kindness to others? Oh, that's a great question. You know, a lot of this, I think, comes down to your intuition and thinking, okay, would you want this said to, to you, you know, trying to always come from a place of caring about someone. Um, you know, I think part of speaking your truth, it's honoring yourself, but also honoring the other person. Um, you know, say, saying things in a way that are for your highest good and their highest good. So I think that's kind of a good barometer. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. And definitely just try not, don't say anything that you don't want to hear, right? Mm -hmm. It's just being compassionate. Yeah, yeah, and you can usually see it in someone's face. If you've said something that, you know, usually the, the head goes back or you see some, if yeah. you get that kind of physical or facial cue, that's a time, you know, maybe just a quick, sorry, I didn't mean to say it, blah, blah, you know, just somehow yeah. restate it in a way that yeah. you can maybe accept it a, a yeah. little bit better. Or even asking them how that made them feel. Like, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. I'm not you, and so I don't know, like it may not have hurt my feelings to hear this, but maybe you took it differently than what I thought you were taking it, so I want to understand you. Yeah, open communication is huge. It doesn't mean just because something's left your mouth and maybe somebody takes it badly that that has to be the end of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, all right, so next question, has speaking the, your truth ever hurt someone else or caused you to lose a relationship or client, and how did you deal with that situation? Um, yes, it has caused me to lose relationships. However, it was really for my highest good because in business and in my personal life, I used to stay in toxic situations way longer than I should have um, because I didn't want to rock the boat because of fear of repercussions. And I put up with a lot of, for the lack of a better word, crap. Yeah. Um, and when I finally did speak my truth, yes, it meant that some people were going to fall away or break that um, connection. But what I realized is that was ultimately a gift for me because when they were taken out of the picture, it allowed room for people to come in who did have my highest good um, at heart and wanted to see me do well, wanted to see me be successful. Um, not to say that it, it, it wasn't hurtful, you know, especially in my professional life, when I think about how hard I work for certain managers yeah. who didn't appreciate it or whatever. And, you know, then you leave that situation and it stays with you for a while. And you think, gosh, you know, I worked so hard and it was, they didn't even blink when I left, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I actually have a situation I'll share about. Um, I had an advisor that I was working with for years, and he was a very big part of my revenue. He did a lot of business, um, but he constantly would say things that were, uh, you know, inappropriate. That we'll just put it that way, mm -hmm. very inappropriate. And I would laugh it off and kind of shrug it off because. I didn't want to rock the boat because I didn't want to lose the revenue, right? And it over the over the years that I worked with him, it became more and more apparent that it was really eating me up inside, right? And every time I would see his name come up on the phone, it would make me cringe. And I wouldn't want to talk to him. And and after I would talk to him, then my it would take so much energy from me. And it would make me feel so terrible that like the next people that I would talk to, I wouldn't be treating them as, as nice or it wouldn't, our conversation wouldn't be as fluffy as it would have been had I not talked to this person before that. Right. So right. it really, it really weighed on me. It was like a very heavy energy. And, um, until I actually confronted it and said how much I don't appreciate it. And I don't think that, um, you know, if we're going to continue doing business together, this is the way that we can continue communicating. And he actually took his business elsewhere. So that was, you know, yeah, my revenue was hit and it sucked. But also I realized like very shortly after I was able to be a lot, um, you know, a lot lighter and feel a lot better and communicate with people in a different way. And, you know, I earned that revenue back and then some with new people that I brought on board, you know? Exactly. Well, yeah. I love that story because it's such a perfect example when you're kind of betraying yourself, you know, something doesn't feel good and it's, yeah. it's happening and happening. And then when you cut that out of your life, yes, it allows soul aligned clients to come through. It was, yeah, it was a blessing in disguise, really. Yeah. So super glad he's gone. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so the next one, we're gonna actually get back onto our question. So, um, oh, a gift. I know that you have a gift for the attendees. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I would like to gift anyone who's interested with a free 45 minute call, and the call can be on the phone or on Zoom, where we'll talk about any one thing you're struggling with right now in your professional life um, or personal life. Um, we'll do a quick brainstorming session. I'll provide some tools and exercises to support you. So for anyone interested, please send me an email at carol at carollcampos.com with the subject line coupon code webinar, and we can work out a date and time. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and we'll actually include that in the email that goes to everybody. Um, so that'll be really great. Now, in conclusion, do you have any thoughts, books, resources that you would recommend to the audience on this topic? Oh, yes, there's a couple of really good ones. So speaking your truth, as we, we talked about, a lot of that comes from childhood and conditioning. So there is a book called Letting Go of Good. Um, hold on one second. Let me see if I have the author. Yes, sorry. Um, her name is Andrea Matthews. Okay. Um, that's a really good one. Um, there's another book. I think a lot of times some of us are more sensitive than others, which that's another thing that makes it hard to speak your truth. Yeah. So whether you're consider yourself highly sensitive or empathic, and the way to know that is if you know you were younger and were kind of the black sheep and people thought you were weird or over dramatic or cried too much or all, all those things that were said to me. Um, there's a great book called The Evolutionary Empath okay. um, by Stephanie Redfeather. And not only does it talk about, you know, what it means to be an empath and kind of our role in the world and why it's so good to have empaths in business, but it also gives you all kinds of toolkits to help you protect your energy and show up when you're dealing with people who are a little bit toxic. Yeah, and I, I think there are more empathic people than they are aware of, you know? Right, um, yeah, in, in this book, um, she talks a lot about how more and more empaths are being born because it's needed in the world right now. Yes, well, I've got um, a book that I read, um, The Empath Survivor's Guide. And I don't remember who the author is. Do you remember the author? No? Okay. Um, but we can, we can definitely include that in the email as well. And it just talks about a lot of different ways that you can protect yourself and mm -hmm. not absorb other people's energy because that, that really is a thing. You're like, you. you know, why am I feeling this way? And not even realizing that, you know, if you're feeling anxious or overwhelmed, it could really be coming from somebody else that's in your vicinity. Right. So, exactly. That's really interesting. Um, oh, it is Judith Orloff, O-R-L-O-F-F, -F, okay. the, the author of that book. Um, and then also in the back of the guide that we're going to be sending everybody, it has a list of resources. And so we've got like books, blogs, um, podcasts, meditations. There's a ton of different resources at the end of every guide that we're putting out. So um, everybody will get those as well. And um, yeah, I guess at this point, do you have anything else that you would like to share with the audience today, Carol? You know, I, I mean, again, I'm just happy to be here. I know this is a big topic and it's not something that you can just flip a switch and it's gonna be different. It really is a practice and I urge people that if they need help in this area, find a mentor, find a coach, that can help you. I know that's what I did. It really helped me just become aware of blind spots that I had and and kind of build that muscle and have tools to, to help me. Yeah, definitely. And there are a lot of different types of you know coaches out there and absolutely. And in fact, I, I'll probably always have coaches of, you know, I have a business coach, I have more personal coach, you know, what whatever works, but it's so important to be able to speak your truth, not squash things down because somebody out there needs what you have to say. They really do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's crucial to have people um, that are coaches or mentors because they can help keep you accountable, you know? It's, True. 
Yeah. You can not implement things that you, you might go read something and think, oh, that's a great idea and then not do it, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, to get that support, that accountability. Exactly. So true. Yeah. Um, all right. So in closing, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We hope you found this topic and this session uh, valuable. We're looking forward to the next time. And actually, the next webinar is Living Your Vision. It's going to be November 17th at 1 Central. And I'm actually going to be the featured speaker. So my team has convinced me that it would be a good idea for me to actually, you know, be one of the resources to everybody and talk about my vision. And so our um, marketing director, Allison, is going to be interviewing me, which will be super fun. Um, also, like I said, I'm going to send out this email with the guide and a copy of this webinar. Um, but if anybody wants to follow us, they can follow us at the Annuity Consultants on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter uh, for more updates on what we're doing. Of course, we're doing other webinars um, on topics outside of the Heart-Centered Planning Series, so keep an eye out for that. I believe we've got another one coming up um, on next Tuesday, the 27th. We're doing a DICE course. So anybody in California or Texas that wants to join us for that, um, it'll be at 11 Central. Um, but thanks so much for joining us today, Carol. I really appreciate your time and your energy and effort. Um, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. All right. Well, you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon, Carol. Bye.